Hi, little loves. In this lesson, we are going to be doing equivalent fractions. An equivalent fraction is a fraction that is the same as the next, so equal, right? That's where we get, that's the word that we can take out of equivalent. So let's do four practice problems for that, and then you'll have more practice problems. Alrighty, so hopefully I didn't write too small here. I have the fraction one-third is the same as four twelfths. Now this is true, this is a true statement, because when we're thinking of equivalent fraction, equivalent fraction not only means that it equals the same amount, uh, like if we had those amount of pieces that it would equal the same amount, but also that uh, we do an equal math to the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom. So how, you might be asking, are you getting one-third into four-twelfths? They have two different denominators, two different numerators. That doesn't seem like they could possibly be the same. Well, they're the same because I do the same math to them. So for example, I'm going to start with one-third because that's the smaller number. So I know that I must do some sort of math to it to make it larger into the four-twelfths. I hopefully am able to take a look at 3 and 12 and notice some sort of relationship already. The relationship that I hopefully notice is my multiplication facts and that 3 times 4 is 12. So then I can get a common denominator, a 12 denominator, by doing some math to 1 third. And the math that I do to it is multiplying both numerator and denominator by 4. So if I have the numerator of one-third is one, so I have one times four over the denominator of one-third is three. Three times four, that would equal four-twelfths. So the statement says one-third equals four-twelfths. That's true because I can make one-third into uh, a twelfth, four-twelfths, by multiplying it by four. Okay, number two, I have um, three over six equals one half. Now, you might know this from a few different ways. Hopefully you know it by being able to look at the relationship between six and two, and that relationship is that uh, six divided by three is two. Also, that half of six is three, and we talked about that in the previous lesson um, when we're looking at the halfway point for equivalent fractions. So if you can take half of the denominator, uh, it just essentially that's it, you just take half of the denominator. So three over six is the same as one half. So this problem number two, example number two, would be more so on how to simplify, which is also very important. Simplifying a fraction is really an equivalent fraction. You're just doing it backward. Rather than making it larger by multiplying, you are dividing and making it smaller. And as we know, anytime that you multiply, your answer gets larger. Anytime that you divide, your answer gets smaller. So if I divide this here, then I have 3 sixths. I want to make that a half. And I do that by dividing both numerator and denominator by the same number, by an equivalent number, an equal number. So 3 divided by 3, and then 6 divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Any number divided by itself is 1. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that's supposed to say a 2. That was me that just messed up on that right now, so I'm so sorry. So this number would be one half, okay? Because three divided by three is one, and six divided by three is two. Problem number three. One fourth equals five twentieths. This is again indeed true, because I can do some sort of math to one fourth to make it larger into the twentieth. Well, again, because I know my multiplication facts, I can look at 4 and 20 and notice that there is a relationship there. And the relationship there is that when I multiply 4 times 5, I get 20. But because it's an equivalent fraction, what I do to the top 
I must do to the bottom. So I have 1 fourth and I want 20 on the bottom. I want 20 on the denominator. So I multiply it by 5. But again, it's an equivalent fraction and what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So I have 1 times 5 because that's the numerator and then the denominator 4 times 5 which is 5 twentieths. That's an equivalent fraction. Last one. Now I'm dealing with 1 half equals 2 fourths. This is a lot like the 3 sixths one uh, that we know half of my denominator 4 is 2 so this would be a half but we're just going to go through just for the sake of practicing our equivalent fraction skills just to show you how that's done. So again, multiplication facts. I should notice a relationship between 2 and 4. I do. That relationship is 2 times 2 is 4. So if I want 4 on the bottom, I know that I have to multiply my denominator by 2. But in order for it to be an equivalent fraction, what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So now I have 1 times 2 over 2 times 2 equals 2 fourths. So really, equivalent fraction is just making sure that you do the same math to the numerator, same math to the denominator. Equivalent fraction can sort of be seen as simplifying if you go that way in some, like if you start from a larger fraction to a smaller fraction. It is important to know equivalent fractions because it is important to be able to look at two fractions and see if you're comparing the two uh, same kind of pieces, same kind of amount, and you won't always have an opportunity to draw it out or do it on a number line. Sometimes you'll just be able, need to be able to look at it and know your math facts, and it's also good practice for your math facts. So that's it for equivalent fractions. Uh, you will have more practice problems on that. Thank you so much for watching this lesson, and I'll see you next.